Well hello one and all, this is my sort of test bed system for uh, experiments with a vacuum pump and the whole purpose is ultimately for freeze drying experiments. Um, the test bed comprises of a salvaged fridge compressor uh, piped through to a salvaged um, device box thing that I think came from an old reprographics uh, camera where you use a vacuum to squish down artwork on a glass uh, plate. But the most critical thing here is it gives me, uh, if, albeit out of focus, um, a vacuum meter uh, around the outside in the black uh, marked in inches mercury. <laughs> Underneath here, a couple of um, bits of pipe for that um, oops, lighting. Um, so you can see the main black pipe going up the centre there comes from the compressor and then the roundy roundy tube comes from the um, vacuum gauge. Um, the clear tube has just been salvaged from um, an, an oxygen purifier or something from the scrapyard. So it's all just scrappy bits put together. Okay. Again to emphasise the scrappy nature of this, um, this is the vacuum uh, side of the compressor. I um, don't think this is uh, happening at the moment, so I just haven't chopped it off yet, but I don't think I need it. Um, this has just been adapted by a bit of that same clear tubing that's underneath the, uh, the sort of test bed, um, and that just makes it just the right size to a uh, press fit on my black uh, silicon hose there, uh, which is reinforced hose as it goes, so that just slips on nicely. Uh, and. Um, even though I've got a clamp on there because it's such a tight fit and we're playing with a vacuum, it actually sucks itself on uh, and stays there uh, quite quite happily. My seal on top of the test bed uh, is just uh, kids' Play-Doh um, and probably what I'll do before I put the, the bowl back on um, is just squish, the, uh, squish this over um, so that I've got a nice bit to sort of suck down on again. Um, because obviously it does get squeezed out from uh, underneath the, the jar um, when the vacuum comes on. So that's squished over, got something to sit on. Here's my uh, jar, which is just a standard kitchen Pyrex bowl. Obviously I'm wearing safety glasses. I'm sure this is plenty strong enough, but I wouldn't like to find out the, the wrong way uh, that it wasn't. In here I've just dropped a bit of tap water. I'm just going to do a complete banshee job and just plop a bit of tap water on the side there um, get rid of the surplus and then we can position that on the putty I don't know exactly what the putty was but it's kids play putty right that's ready to play <coughs> uh, probably isn't quite sealed down yet but here we go okay I'm going to start the compressor plug it in um, yeah, watch out for the noise it's so incredibly noisy there we go that's running. Okay. Uh, gauge isn't moving at the moment, probably because I'm uh, leaking around here. But as you can hear, insanely noisy. Like, it's 10 o'clock at night almost, and the neighbours can't hear a thing. In fact, I've got a job to hear it. The noisiest bit is the outlet pipe where I haven't done a tidy job of um, unsnipping this, and you can hear the outlet on the compressor is... Uh, blowing away quite nicely. Right, so I'm just going to push this down now and um, wait until it seals. Pushy push, I can hear it burgling some air bubbles in. And there it goes. Right, that's sealed down. And that's uh, minus 10 inches, minus 15 inches, minus Coming up to minus 20 inches mercury. Yumpty tumpty tum, it's so slow. Just kidding. And what else we got? We got minus 25 inches. And the little bit of water I had inside. Just um, don't think there's anything going on with that yet. Don't see any bubbles. The only bubbles that were sort of from air leaking in initially. Um, but nothing, uh, nothing boiling, which is what we're interested in. Uh, and now we are at the last mark. There is minus 30, 
so I make that 25, 6, 7, 28 inches mercury, um, just over 28 inches. Um, from what I'm reading, uh, minus 30, uh, or 29.97, is a complete vacuum. But from here on in, it takes an awful lot of energy to get it to go the whole hog. And, um, you know, you need very expensive, clever pumps to do it. So if I'm going to take a look in here now, I don't know if you can see, there's some little bubbles now, just along the edge of the water that I dropped in there. And that's not bubbles because of air leaking in, because we're still holding a, holding a vacuum. Um, but that's bubbles because it's... Um, bubbling. The temperature ambient probably about 15 degrees, um, so that's pretty impressive. I dare say if I added a little bit of heat underneath the metal plate here, um, it would boil very easily, um, possibly even just off the heat of the hand, off my hand, um, but super, super simple. Okay, so that's it. If I turn the compressor off, yank that puppy out, there we go, uh, you'll see that we're getting such a good seal that this is very happily holding a vacuum and I'll come back to that in a little while. That's just over 28 and a half actually. That's um, very close to 29 inches mercury uh, which would explain why we've got there's quite a few bubbles there now. I doubt you can see that. Quite a few bubbles on the surface there. Let's see if I can highlight that there. You can see the bubbles. It's not a, a hard boil um, but it's certainly there, doing its thing. Okay, uh, TH has asked about um, the wiring for the compressor, so let me just um, open that up and um, and show you that. Uh, there's the electrical uh, connection box. Just one screw to get the case off. I'll show you that in just a sec. Okay, most importantly, with the uh, compressor unplugged for obvious safety reasons, just undone the screw down the side. And the case pops off like so, uh, it, uh, revealing this connection box, and then this safety uh, cover just uh, slots over the top. There's a serial number, which you can't read because it's too bright in that light, serial number there, uh, which I was able to search for along with the serial number of the compressor itself, which is a TLES Danfoss make uh, TLEC4 KK2. I was able to successfully um, get all the information I needed off that. So, okay, sorry it's out of focus, but uh, coming on the inlet cable here, um, there's uh, live neutral and earth. So neutral off to the left, uh, live to the right here, and then earth just goes around the corner. And uh, just connecting um, neutral and live, uh, the thing didn't run. Um, but that wasn't a great surprise, it's sort of what I expected, because, because of course uh, there was another wire coming in through the bottom here um, that had four cables, earth, live, neutral, and a black lead uh, that went off to the thermostat and the controls within the, um, within the fridge itself. Um, looking at the schematics that I found in the PDF, um, as previously posted, um, it was fairly straightforward to deduce that the live and neutral go off to the light bulb uh, within the fridge <coughs> on a door switch, uh, and that left the th thermostat taking a live feed, which then came back onto this connector at the bottom. It's hard to see, but that is marked C, this connector at the bottom. Uh, so what I've done is I've just whipped off a bit of um, spare cable uh, with a spade on it, and I've connected that directly to live, and that just simulates the thermostat uh, requesting power, if that's the right way of putting it. So, uh, really very simple, whatever fridge or compressor you get, uh, I'd suggest doing a search for the um, PDF. It would be pretty disastrous to get it wrong, um, but in this case, with a little bit of information, it was very simple to uh, make it happen. So let me pop that back on there. And the case... Do. Snug as a bug. Almost. Not quite. Anyway, okay, that's on. <coughs> but, okay, 
as the compressor not running for, I don't know, three or four minutes, uh, probably five minutes since I switched it off, um, you can see here in the jar that we are still holding, uh, I make that just over 28 and a half inches mercury. Of course, I'm treating this as accurate. I have no idea how accurate this is. Um, but suffice to say, it hasn't dropped at all. Good old kid's putty doing its thing. And there's still quite a few bubbles in that splash. Uh, and in the little splashes over there. Um, particularly in that larger glob. Uh, so that's it. Um, seals around the inlet pipes, as you can see. They were just done with hot glue. Uh, the white nipple there for the vacuum uh, connection, the, the meter connection, the gauge connection, uh, that's got a rubber uh, seal on the back end of that. So even if the glue's not doing its thing, the vacuum's going to pull onto the seal. Um, but that's all. I've done just a bit of hot glue. Um, that's it. Simple as that. Um, as I say, it's not quite pulling enough vacuum uh, to do what we want to do, to do the whole freeze-drying thing. Uh, because I think we want to be able to boil water visibly much quicker than that. Um, seeing other YouTube clips, you can see how almost explosively, um, with an industrial vacuum pump, um, the water boils almost explosively. Um, so I think two of these in series, I've heard a lot of people online talking about that. Just two of these in series uh, from the outlet to the inlet on the next one uh, and let them work in uh, in series. Should do the trick. I'll post an update as soon as I know whether that works. That's all for now. This is uh, Marcel in Guernsey uh, trying out for home freeze drying.